Again, the idea of, of, of politicizing the office. Some are criticizing the current attorney general for over-politicizing the office. How far do you go as a... No, Ted, Rodney, no, it's words. not... It, no, you're using no, word, Rodney, activist, Rodney, partisan. Rodney, please. And can you, can you, thank you. Don, uh, please. Uh, that was Arizona Horizon moderator Ted Simons trying to shush Republican Attorney General candidate Rodney Glassman, who was trying to butt in during a candidate debate last week. The takeaway from that debate, four of the six Republican candidates to serve as the state's top law enforcement officer said they would not have certified the 2020 election results as a witness, as current Republican AG Mark Burnovich did. A fifth candidate dodged the question. Only one candidate, Lacey Cooper, said she would have signed. With early voting starting in a little over six weeks, that's right, six weeks, we now know Republican primary voters will have several election deniers to choose from in all the top statewide races. So, can an election denier win the general election? Joining us are Paul Bentz. He has his finger on Arizona's pulse as Senior Vice President for Research and Strategy at High Ground Consulting. And Kathy Petzis, she's a former Republican candidate for the state legislature and former chair of what was the Legislative District 28 Republicans in North Phoenix and Paradise Valley, the most competitive district in Arizona, they like to say. Welcome to Square Off. Thank you. Uh, you're both Republicans. We want to put that out there. We want to get the view from inside the tent or the tents. I don't know how many there are now in the <laughs> Republican Party. Uh, but I do want to start in Georgia, not Arizona and where three current or former Republican governors are speaking up for a Republican governor, Brian Kemp, who's been endorsed, who's not been endorsed by Donald Trump. Trump has endorsed his opponent, David Perdue. Doug Ducey will campaign for Kemp ahead of the primary in about uh, 10 days. So will VP Mike Pence. So will former Governor Chris Christie. So will Governor Pete Ricketts of Nebraska. I'll start with you, Paul. Do you see any possibility that Doug Ducey endorses the candidate for governor or a Republican candidate for governor before the primary here in Arizona? I don't foresee it happening here in Arizona. I think there's several people to choose from. And it would probably, he's focused on a lot of these other efforts and has been quite successful. Him and the Republican Governors Association, the RGA, will be active in the general election supporting their candidate or at least attacking Hobbs. Um, I think he's focused in other spots right now. Uh, they were very successful in Virginia, for example, and showed the template that Republicans should be using to win. And I think they're trying to translate that to Georgia right now. And Kathy, do you think he'll come out for a Republican candidate for governor before the primary and buck Trump as he's doing in Georgia? Well, we don't know what the governor will do, and it'll be determined perhaps later, but I don't think so right now. That's, I think he'll keep his powder dry. There's plenty to keep the governor busy on other races throughout the United States. So I don't, I don't, that's not my... And thought. to be more specific, even though Carrie Lake, who apparently leads in the polls and is no friend of Doug Ducey, could wind up winning that primary. Even given all that, you think he would just stay out of it? Well, it sounds like Kerry Lake doesn't want the support of the RGA anyway, so they'll have plenty of money to spend in other states if she were to win the primary, I suppose. So just let, let it play out and then go to town and help her out. Don't know. If, I mean, it's an interesting I, question. Yeah. I mean, Republicans are at an impasse right now about what they want to do. You talked about election denial. You've talked about the audit earlier in this uh, show. One of the things that we are seeing is that the majority of the electorate don't believe there was fraud that impacted the outcome of the election. They don't support the audit. Yet those are the things that they're focused on right now in the primary. It's, they're all trying to get this small segment of the Republican primary electorate, and they might be sacrificing the general election by doing that. They're playing to halftime. We want to play, I, Paul and I think we both agree, we want to win the game. And the game ends in November. We don't turn off the TV at halftime during a football game. You don't win there. You win in November. And with this type of, of uh, the, 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 um, the verbiage that they've got going out there is all about election integrity and that there was danger in our past election. And that's not going to win when it comes to November. So we, independent voters will show them that. So when we see a debate like that one for the attorney general's race where four of the candidates didn't, didn't, didn't believe the results, or at least on camera, would not believe the results of the 2020 election, 
You said before, that's not good news. No, it's not good news. It's not good news for Republicans if they want to win in November. Because th if we're using this kind of rhetoric going to the primary, you will lose it if you continue that going into November. And you, ag you agree, Paul. polling shows that. 2022 it's should be a really good year for Republicans, by a plus eight to plus 10 Republican participation advantage. Midterms in Arizona have typically been a dominated Republican affair. But focusing on issues like this to that narrow segment to appeal, to try to get that Trump advantage and to appeal to the former president may be a great strategy in the primary, but it is very difficult to navigate away from that in the general election. What about the role of independents in the primary? Because they can vote. Paul, I know you've been on top of this. Uh, County recorder Stephen Richer posted a tweet earlier this week suggesting there was a large number of independents who were going to be voting in Republican primaries. They've asked for ballots in those primaries. How do you read those numbers? Well, I think the thing to bear in mind is independents, if you are interested, you can vote in every primary election except for the presidential preference election. That's the only one that you're not encouraged to participate in because that's a private party election. But you can request a ballot. It's just a significant barrier to participation. And independents are now the largest group in the Maricopa County. Um, they have an incredible amount of power, but they don't typically wield it. The challenge is, I think, Richard, the last announcement was about 28,000 uh, independents had requested a ballot. And that's great. I think independents should absolutely vote. But the challenge is, there's going to be about 700,000 Republicans and 700,000 Democrats who get ballots automatically. Um, because of the way our permanent early voting system works, they're going to get a ballot no matter what. It's independents that have to go through an extra hoop and, quite frankly, aren't treated fairly in our election So system. they're likely to be less than 5%? Right now they're about 2%. They generally may make it up to about 10% of the total participation, but that's pretty generous. But they might be able to tilt a close primary where you have a crowded field. If they wanted to, they absolutely could. Independents could uh, definitely put their thumb on the scales and make a big difference in elections. They typically have not. But they certainly could. Kathy, let's talk don't, about. Uh, do you don't add you to that? think that with the effort that Richard is doing, though, and with so many people already coming out, I think that it's probably going to be a much greater um, impact that independents have this time around. I agree. The challenge is. Independents are about a third of our electorate. At, at best, they'll probably be a quarter, about 25% of the general election electorate. They just don't participate in the same level when the president's not on the ballot. I think they could get into the primary and make big impacts. And I think what Richard's doing is very noble, and it's the right thing to do. It's He's just independents effective. need to wake up and make sure they're part of the primary process. I think this year there'll be more, because more people have... Has, have chosen to leave their party and become independents, and that doesn't mean that they weren't voters before. They just don't want to be associated to a certain party. And with that, I think that they still have that interest in voting, and that's why we're going to see an uptick in independents turning out to vote in primaries this year, which I think is a good thing. All right, something to watch. Kathy Patsis and Paul Bentz, thanks so much for joining us.